Today I'm going to be showing you a few simple experiments like this one that demonstrate the principle of magnetic induction. Magnetic induction is a very important principle which is behind telephones, generators, microphones, and tape players, for instance. This first demonstration will show the basic principle of magnetic induction. Now here in my hand I have a permanent magnet. And over here you see we have a coil with many loops of wire which is attached to a galvanometer. The galvanometer is a device which sensitively measures small currents. Now I'm going to move the magnet towards the coil. What you see is that the needle on the galvanometer was deflected. That means that there was a current flowing through the coil even though there's no battery in that circuit. When I remove the magnet, as you see, there was also a current created, but this time it was in the opposite direction from what you saw the first time. We can infer from this response that when a magnetic field changes, it induces an EMF or electromotive force in the circuit. The physical rule that governs magnetic induction is called Faraday's law. Let me try to state that law a little bit more precisely than I have previously. What Faraday's law states is that the rate of change of magnetic flux through a loop of wire, d phi dt, is equal to the negative of the line integral of the induced electric field around the loop, minus e dot dl, the integral of that. This induced electric field around the loop leads to the induced EMF that I've mentioned before. The fact that there are many loops of wire in the coil magnifies the induction effect. Here we've changed the setup just a little bit. What we've done is replace the permanent magnet with an electromagnet. In the electromagnet you have a battery hooked up to this coil with many loops. And when the current flows through these loops it generates a magnetic field. The circuit is controlled by a switch here. And when I throw the switch you see the galvanometer responds. This has induced a current, just as we saw before. Now let me turn off the switch. Once again, we have a response, but this time in the opposite direction, because the change in the magnetic field was opposite to the change before. This general setup, where an electromagnet produces an induced current in another coil, is called a transformer. Next, I'm going to use this iron core and add it to these two loops. And what that's going to do is, it's going to amplify the effect because the iron core enhances the magnetic field through the coils. Now watch what happens. That's more like it. The principles involved in this demonstration are just the same as those involved in an actual working transformer. A small example of which I have here. You see that in this transformer there are three main components, just as in ours. There's two coils of wire, one here and one here, and an iron core connecting them. Now let's try to use induction to develop a new space program. What this device is, is an electromagnet. You can see it consists of a coil of wire here with an iron core in the center of it, which extends up here. This is connected to an alternating current. And I'm going to put an aluminum ring around the iron core and switch it on. We have a liftoff. The way this works is that the changing magnetic field in the iron core induces a current which goes around this ring. The magnetic field then puts a force on that current, forcing the ring up the iron core and into the air. Now I'm going to use this heavier copper ring. This heavier ring isn't actually launched now. It's just held suspended by the forces. The magnetic field is constantly changing in time, as I said, because it's on an AC current. But the current in this ring that's induced is changing direction in step, so that the force on the ring is always upwards. This ring has a gap. Let's see what happens when we try to launch it. Well, as you see, nothing happens. The reason is that due to the gap, the current can't flow around the ring. Therefore, there's no force. Now we're going to see an, an application of Faraday's law where the magnetic flux oscillates. 
If I set this magnet here in motion, it induces a current in this coil, which is actually connected to the second coil, as opposed to the transformer, where it's simply connected by induction. The current through the second coil now produces a magnetic field which puts a force on the second magnet, causing it to oscillate. This is the basic principle behind the telephone. In this experiment, a cardboard disc swings freely through the poles of a permanent magnet. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this cardboard disc with a solid aluminum disc. Now let's release it. As you see, it stops almost immediately. The reason is that the magnetic field induces eddy currents in the disc. What's happening is that as the disc passes between the poles of the magnet, the magnetic flux through the disc is changing. This induces a current which travels around through the disc. This current is acted on by the magnetic force from the magnetic field of the permanent magnet. The law called Lenz's law states that such induced currents act in such a way as to reduce the change in the magnetic field. In this case, it stops the change completely by stopping the motion of the disc. Next, I'm going to use this slotted disc. These slots impede the flow of eddy currents. When I launch this disc, you see that the motion is damped, but not as heavily as the solid aluminum disc was. This is an electric generator. In the electric generator, mechanical energy, in this case from this crank, is inverted to electrical energy using magnetic induction. The way this works is a coil of wire turns inside a set of permanent horseshoe magnets. This principle is the same principle as in a hydroelectric plant or in a car generator. My energy, however, is a limited resource.